Okay, in this second part of the video, we'll be continuing where we left off previously. Again, this is the uh, March 2019 paper, um, question paper 2. And uh, we are now at question 27 of the uh, data manipulation portion. Alright, so um, uh, this particular question requires you to produce a tabular report using fields from the relevant tables. Uh, so... In order for us to create a report, we must, we must first create a query, okay? Now, a query accomplishes two things, okay? The first one is that it performs um, runtime calculation, okay? And it also performs filtering of records. So, a query essentially allows you to extract certain uh, re records from uh, tables that you need and uh, exclude or, how do I say this, uh, throw away those records you don't need. Okay, so in order for you to produce a report with a certain criteria, you must produce a query first. Okay, now this is different from creating a form. You don't need to create a query for a form because a form just allows you to enter data into a table. If you want data to come out from a table or extract data from a table to be displayed, then you need a query. Okay, so your form is, an, uh, is a form of input into the table. Your query is a form of output, okay? Now, in order for us to produce a report, we need to produce a query first. So, because I have three tables here, okay, I am going to extract all the fields from these tables, regardless of what the question says. So, to make it easier in the query, we will select all the fields from all the tables, okay? So, I'm going to go to create, and then I'm going to select query wizard, okay? Make sure you select the tables here and not, um, let's say, uh, you know, in another question, you created a query, don't select that query, just select the tables necessary. So because I have three tables here, I can select either one of the tables first, right? Then I go to query wizard, click OK. I'm going to select everything from the first table. I'm going to switch to the next table. I'm going to select everything as well. And I'm going to switch to the third table and selecting uh, select everything as well. Okay, I'm going to click next all the way and to make it easier for me uh, to identify which question this query belongs to, I'm going to name it Q27, meaning question 27. Okay, I'm going to click finish. Now what happens, right, if you look at this query, it is basically a combination of data from all three tables. Okay, so all three tables here with the correct relationship, okay, actually combine to create this query. Right, now once I've created a query already, all right, I'm going to move on to the filtering portion. Now, again, a query performs uh, two things, right? Calculation as well as, uh, as well as filtering. Now, this question does not have a runtime calculation, uh, um, 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 a runtime calculation question, okay? If you look at question 28, on the other hand, you will see uh, a runtime calculation uh, question, all right? So for, for, for question 27, we don't need to do the runtime calculation. We only need to do the filtering portion, okay? And the filtering portion is at uh, sub point number three. It says, select only courses where the course code starts with the letter A, all right? So how do I put in a, um, a, a filtering criteria for the query, okay? It's very simple. I just right click on the query and go to design view. Now. It wants to select courses where the course code starts with the letter A. So I'm going to look for course code first. Mm, where the hell is it? Ah, there you go. Now, starts with the letter A does not uh, mean start with A. Okay? Now, you need to use a wildcard selector. Now, because it starts with A followed by any letter or number, I put A followed by an asterisk. Okay? The asterisk actually represents a wildcard selector which means anything. So A star meaning starts with A followed by anything. If I put star A, it means ends with A, meaning starts with anything, ends with A. If I then put star A star, it means that contains the letter A. I don't care where the letter is. It could be in front or it could be behind. It could be in the middle or maybe the second last, one, uh, last uh, letter. It doesn't matter, right? So... Because the question says starts with the letter A, I'm going to put A star. And that's what you guys need to score, A star. There you go. 
All right, and then I'm going to run the query just to check whether all the course codes now start with the letter A. So if you scroll to the right here, you will see all the course codes now start with the letter A, A, blah, 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 all the way down. Okay, so again, a query performs two things. Calculation, you don't need to do this. Filtering, you've done that. So once you have done these two things in a query, you can now move on to create a report. Okay, so before I create a report from this query, I'm going to save it a few times. Again, because access sometimes is a bit wonky, it's weird. And then I'm going to close the query. Okay, then I'm going to select the query and from this query, I'm going to create the report. Okay, do not select the tables to create a report because you're going to select full uh, data, meaning all the records, uh, all the records from all the tables here. That's not the point you have to create a report based on the data you filtered and what filters your data the query so select the query go to create and then this time we're going to select report wizard all right now let's see what we need to display 27 sub point number one shows only the fields role number so i'm going to select role number here uh, first name last name okay gender and course code gender 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 course code and then course location start date and tutor start date and tutor that's it all right i'm going to click next now make sure everything fits in one box if you see something like this you need to toggle it so that it fits in one box okay we don't need to perform any grouping or arrangements in um well in the uh, CAIE uh, examinations. So we don't need to do that. So I'm gonna click next. Do you want to add any grouping levels? Meh, no, go next. And then if you look at 27 sub point number four, it says sorts the data into ascending order of course code. So I'm gonna select course code, sorting in ascending order, and then ascending order of last name. So sort by course code, ascending, and then by last name, ascending. Right, and then followed by has a page orientation of landscape. So has a page orientation of landscape. I'm gonna click next and then I'm gonna give this a name called question 27 as well. So it's easier for me to identify. Okay, so let's click finish and see how the report looks like. Okay, now if you look at the question right now, you will notice that there are some data, um, some fields, okay, they are not arranged uh, in the correct order. If you look at question 27, sub point number one, you will notice that it says role number first, followed by first name and last name. I have no idea why first name is here, uh, although I selected it in uh, perfect order. Again, it's, uh, access doing its thing. Good job, Microsoft. Um, so what I need to do is I will go to uh, layout view because it's easier for me to adjust uh, where the uh, fields are. Okay, so I'm going to go there and then I'm going to start resizing the fields. Okay, so in order for me to uh, multi-select the field name as well as the data, I just hold down control and then I can resize it like that. Now the reason why I'm doing it in layout view is that I can see the changes in real time. Okay, now so I know that uh, first name comes first. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to slowly scale the data and create um, enough space oops, so that I can place uh, first name um, at the beginning. Right, so move this over. Okay, then I can use the arrow buttons to move it. Ooh. Okay, now I'm going to move the first name to where it's supposed to be first. Okay, I'm going to move it over here. And then followed by, oh dear God, roll number first, my bad. Where the hell is roll number? Ah, roll number. Okay, so roll number first, followed by first name. Okay, so I'm going to move this over here a little bit. Okay, first name. Okay, followed by last name. And then gender. Dear God, everything is out of whack. Okay, last name. Gender. Okay, it doesn't have to be that big. So I'm going to move it over. And then... Um, first name, last name, gender. Okay, course code. Good. Okay, that's position correctly. Uh, course. Resize it a little bit. You need more space, bro. Okay. Um, location. This is good too. Location. Um, start date and tutor, right? Start date, 
can resize it. Take the Miss J gathered. Okay, so looking good. Now, this is not the correct way to preview your report, okay? Now, the reason why, again, I'm using layout view is so that I can move the field names and uh, the data around so that um, I can see how the report and all the corresponding uh, records look like when I print them out, okay? In order for you to check um, how your report looks like when it's printed out, you need to go to print preview, okay? This is actually how your report looks like when you print it out, okay? So everything looks fine. Now we've done the um, um, arranging the fields in correct order. We've done uh, display data and labels in full. Everything looks good. Uh, we've selected the course code, okay, that starts only with the letter A. We've sorted the data into ascending order of course code, right? And then by ascending order of last name, um, has a pair, uh, it has a page orientation of landscape and it fits on a single page wide. Yes, it scrolls across two pages, okay? But the data or the columns fit in one page wide. So that's what it actually means. It doesn't mean everything needs to fit into one page, all right? Now, moving on, calculate the number of delegates on these courses and positions this number under the last name column, okay? Now, I'm going to calculate the number of delegates uh, using the uh, roll number because this is a unique identifier for the delegates, okay? So, I'm going to go to design view. I'm going to right-click on the detail because this is the data. I can't calculate labels, all right? I can only calculate the data here. So, I'm going to right-click. I'm going to go to total and I'm going to say count uh, records. So, I'm going to count how many records uh, there, there are individually. So. Once I do that, you'll notice that a formula is displayed. Now, this formula is not displayed in full, so I need to scale it so that it's displayed in full. Basically, this star thing means count all or count all the records there. are. Okay, so this is uh, basically a structured query language uh, uh, syntax, okay, SQL. Anyway, um, and positions this number under the last name column. So I'm going to move this, position it under last name. And just to make sure it's left aligned, I'm going to go to home and shift it to the left. Okay. And then has a label total delegates to the left of this value. Go back to design, putting in the label. Now, remember, never put AB, just put in AA. That represents label. Or you can use R. Ah, okay. Here we go. Total delegates. Okay. I'm going to right align this. So that it looks good. Honestly, I, I'm not sure whether it will gain you any marks or not, but you know. Okay, total delegates. Includes the report title, archaeology course delegates. Okay. Okay, guys, just as uh, just a reminder, if the question um, has the... Um, letters in capital, then you need to follow. Now, in this case, the A for archaeology is uh, um, capital, and then course and delegates is actually lowercase, so you need to follow that, all right? Now, has your name, center number, and candidate number displayed on each page of the report? So each page, meaning it has to be either in the page header or the page footer. So page, uh, page header or the page footer, because you want it to appear in every single page. So page, the Okay, so design, AA, again, a label, so your name, center number, and my favorite number, candidate number, all right? So again, in order for it to look nice, I'm going to center align the thing, okay? And then um, save and print your report. Now, in the actual IGCSE ICT examination, you are supposed to print this out. Now, in this um, video demonstration, I'm going to print it to PDF so that you guys can see what it actually looks like printed up, okay? Now, again, to in order for you to preview your report, okay, you need to go to print preview. Not report view, not layout view, not design view. It's print preview. So, I'm going to select that. Ooh, everything looks fantastic, right? Total delegates, 36. I'm going to print it. And then I'm going to select Microsoft Print to PDF just so you guys can see how it looks like. Okay, I'm going to click OK. Um, and then I'm going to save it in... Um, okay, I'm going to call this um, Printout 2. All right, so I'm going to open it and show you guys how it looks like. Uh, 2. 
So it'll look like this when you print it out. So it contains your name, center number, and uh, candidate number as well. Now, during IGCSE ICT, when you print this out, um, it has um, your name, center number, and candidate number have to appear on every single page of the document. So if your printout does not contain your name, center number, or uh, and candidate number, uh, you will not be handed your printout. So this is actually very, very important. And for those of you sitting for our test too, if you do not have your PDF um, submitted, sorry, you will not be given any marks as well. So this is, this is a very important um, uh, skill and practice uh, to do before your actual test. Okay. So, all right. Now we're going to move on to question 28. Um, now, produce a tabular report using fields from the relevant tables. Okay. Now, again, you want to produce a report, right? So in order for you to produce a report, you need to create a query first. So I'm going to close everything and I'm going to redo what we did in 27. So every single new report must come with a new query as well. Okay, so again, same thing. I'm going to select either one of the tables because I'm going to select all the data from all the tables anyway. So I'm going to go to create and then I'm going to go to query visit. Okay, select all the data. Okay indiscriminately just selecting everything do not select anything from the query okay now this query has the the, the, the uh, all the data filtered so do not select from query just select from your tables okay and that was what i was uh, talking about in question 27 also never ever um, create a query out of a query unless really necessary um, uh, based on experience there i think there are only like one or two test papers uh, sorry exam papers that have these type of questions uh, and those papers have uh, been around for quite some time. Uh, 2016 or 15 paper, I can't remember. Anyway, so I'm going to click next. And then because this is question 28, I'm going to put Q28. So it's easy for me to identify which uh, question I'm working on for this query. Now, again, a query performs two different functions, right? It is um, used for output, meaning it extracts data from a table to be displayed, right? A query performs two things. It performs a runtime calculation and it also performs content filtering. Uh, so if you look at question 28 right now, sub point number one, it says contains a new field price, which is calculated at runtime and is displayed as currency. This field will calculate weekly cost multiplied by weeks. So very simple, I'm going to go to design view, I'm going to scroll all the way to the end here, okay, to put in um, the new field. Now, if you do not have enough fields here, what you can do is you just select the last field and select insert column. So it will create um, an empty field here for you. Does it matter whether your columns are pushed to the right? No, it, it doesn't, okay? So that's nothing to worry about. So I'm just going to cut it and then I'm just going to work on it here. Okay. So now the new field is called price. So I'm going to type price followed by a colon. So the colon is um, an equivalent of equals. Okay. But in this case, we need to use a colon. Okay. To signify the equal sign. Now this field will calculate weekly costs, right? Now, if we look at our tables here, Right? You'll notice that there is an existing field called weekly cost, right? So I will type weekly cost, underscore cost, sorry, um, multiplied by weeks. So multiply by weeks. So weeks, W-E-E-K-S, and I press enter. Now notice that when I press enter, the weekly cost has um, the uh, square brackets okay, around it and weeks have uh, have been applied with a square brackets as well. What does this mean? This means that weekly cost is an existing field in one of the tables, okay? So it is an existing field in M219 rooms table. Weeks also has um, the square brackets around it because it is a table, uh, sorry, it's part of the table M219 courses, okay? So essentially, you're creating a new field called price, which does not have the double uh, the um, square brackets because it's a new calculated field. And the data comes from weekly cost multiplied by weeks. Okay, so I'm going to go to property sheet here and make sure that the format is actually in currency. 
So I'm going to save that and I'm going to run my report and see whether it works. So I'm going to run it and there you go, price, right? So weekly cost 760 multiplied by weeks. So 760 multiplied by 2 equals to 1520. There you go. And it is in currency. So the um, calculation, a runtime calculation that is to be done for a query is done. Next, we will move on to the filtering portion. So sub point number four at question number 28, it says, selects only the records where location is Aman and paid is no. So design view, um, location, where's location? Location is Aman. So I'm just going to type Aman and paid is no. Where's paid? Ah, paid is no. I'm going to run it. So location is Aman. Fantastic. And paid is no. So query's job is done. Next, we can do the report, right? So question 28, create um, report wizard. Okay, make sure you select the correct query. Now we are working on question 28. So um, we do question 28. Okay, so report wizard. Um... First name, last name, paid. First name, last name, paid. Location. Weeks. Room type. Where did I room type? Weekly cost. And price. Okay, there you go. Remember, everything should fit in uh, one box. Okay, everything looks good here, so I don't need to adjust anything. Um, sorts weekly cost in descending order and then last name in ascending order. So weekly cost in descending order. Just going to click on that. And then last name in ascending order. There you go. Next. And then it has to fit on a portrait page. And I'm going to call it question 28 as well. Okay, so it looks like that. Again, we need to go to um, layout view to arrange everything. Right, so let's do the uh, arrangements for now. So first name, last name, paid location. Dear God. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to move this over a little bit. Okay, just so that we have enough space. So first name first. Last name. So first name. Followed by last name and then paid. Let's pay. Oh, there you go. Paid. Followed by location. Location. Okay. Followed by weeks. Okay. Weeks. Followed by room type. Mm. Followed by weekly cost and then followed by price. There you go. Beautiful. Boom. Okay. Um, all right. So point number one done. Point number two done. Point number three done. Point number four done. Point number five done. Okay. Now we are at point number six. Calculates the total price and place this below the field price. Right. So I need to calculate the total price here. So I'm going to go to design view. I'm going to right click on the uh, record again, not the field name. You have to click on the individual field. Um, total, this time it wants the total of all the prices. So I'm going to say sum. Sum meaning add everything together. I'm going to resize this so that the formula can be seen. Again, I'm going to right align it so that it looks good. Um, okay, and then it says display a label. Um, total payments to collect to the left of this value. So again, under design, I'm going to put in... Uh, uh, Again, right? Total payments to collect. And then I'm going to right align it. Select it. I'm going to right align it. Um, has a page orientation of portrait. Done. Fits on a single page. Done. Includes the title Aman Course Update at the top of the report. So, Aman Course Update. 
right? Display your name, center number, and candidate number at the top right of the report. Okay, so let's preview the report first. All right, everything looks perfect. Now, because the question says top right of the report and everything fits in one page, now I can deviate a little bit from the uh, page header thing and put it in report header. Now, the reason why I don't put it in page header is because it will not appear at the top right. Okay, what do I mean by that? Okay, so let's say if I move all the labels here down and I put in a label here, all right, and then I align it to the right perhaps, and I preview the report, it's not exactly top right, is it? Right, so I need to move it to the top right here. So in order for me to do that, I'll just shift it here. Okay, I'm going to shift everything up as well. And then save it and print preview it. There you go. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to print it out as well. Okay, so make sure you have entered your name, center number, da, 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 save and print the report. So I'm going to print it. Um, I'm going to call it print out 3. So print out 3 like this okay now I seem to have left out one question which is evidence 11 all right it says place in your evidence document a screenshot um, showing the formula used to calculate the number of delegates right so how did I calculate the number of delegates so I calculated the number of delegates by using the count all function so I'm gonna print screen and then I'm going to paste this in my evidence document where the hell is it this one this is question evidence 11 11 eh. Boom. okay there you go now what if the question says okay um, place in your evidence document um, how you um, perhaps uh, sh selected only the courses uh, um, select selected only courses where the course code starts with the letter A, or um, display your filtering criteria uh, and take a screenshot and insert it into your evidence document. Okay, so what does this mean? How did you filter? your data you don't filter your data in the report you filter your data in the query so what you can do is you go to your query and take a screenshot of your filter here to show that you have performed uh, the query uh, correctly by putting in the correct criteria all right so I guess that's all for data manipulation for this particular portion um, in the uh, next video, we're going to work on the um, document production uh, portion, the mail merge portion, as well as the presentation portion. Right? Thank you, people.